Let me ask you about Robert Schiller, the famous Nobel Prize winning The Economist. The most down to earth, humble, unassuming Nobel laureate I have ever met in my life. He's, he's unbelievable. Um, I, I met him this week, he was on Bloomberg TV, he was walking around, I ran into him in the lobby of the Fox News building, and of course he's like a lot of, you know, where's the front door? You know, what, where's the elevator? How, how does the elevator work? You know, <laughs> Professor Schiller, you, you go in this door, you push the button, it'll, it'll, he, he was confused by the fact that it didn't have buttons inside the elevator, right? You push 33 and it takes you up automatically. That threw him off. <laughs> I was able to help him with that. Anyway, you were saying, Robert Schiller. What, what was the most interesting thing that Robert told you of the way forward, of what needs to be done with the financial industry? Because what he won the Nobel Prize for is one of the most, it turned out to be one of the most important tenets of economics. Right, and he really didn't get into any of that or any technical economics in the PC. I would, I would, in full disclosure, he wrote a book called Finance and the Good Society, which, as you can imagine, is right down the same fairway as my book, A Force for Good. And when I asked him to contribute to the book, uh, Vikram had asked me to teach uh, one of his classes at Yale, and I went to Yale and he wanted to meet with me. Uh, because he wanted to make sure that my book was going to be consistent with his views of finance, which is that finance ought to contribute to a good society. Finance ought to be tethered to and hooked to and drive positive social outcomes. So um, he he was his his chapter really talks about um, there's there's a uh, the, the fact that finance is like the air we breathe, the water we drink, it's the, the tides, the moon, the sun, the, it, it's absolutely indistinguishable from the capitalist system that we count on to create wealth, value, drive growth uh, in the world today. And, and he's a real um, proponent of financial innovation and innovation got a bad rap during the financial crisis. So one of the themes in the piece and one of the themes that he talks about is um, it's not that we need less innovation. He actually believes we need more innovation, the right but the right kind of innovation. So what kind of innovation is that? Um, an example would be, uh, of course, bad innovation was, uh, was um, well, I mean, so let's take credit derivatives, default swaps. Those got you know, written up a million times during the financial crisis. All that is, is a, syn I mean, it's a synthetic vehicle, financial instrument, where party A says, I don't want to bear all the risk of the loan I made to this entity over here, but instead of selling off part of the loan, why don't I just write an agreement where you agree to pay me if that loan, reimburse me if that goes bad. There's nothing wrong with that contract, provided it's written properly, between two financial institutions that can honor their, their agreements. But what happened was that credit default swaps got taken out of that risk sharing role and they just got traded out here without any without any underlying risk to hedge against. So they became instruments of speculation. Well, that doesn't mean credit default swaps and that innovation was a bad idea. It just meant they were, that innovation was put to bad uses. Okay, so today uh, there's a guy at MIT, his name is Andrew Lowe. He was on the Future of Finance Initiative with me and he's, he's peddling an idea, he's a brilliant guy, to have a $20 billion or $30 billion fund that would finance research into incurable diseases. And he's done this research on the fund has to be that big and it has to be diversified across thousands of different drug testing protocols. But he's proposing that you go out, you raise money for this, you invest in life-changing um, uh, drug research, and that would be an example of innovation in the service of a positive social goal. So Schiller was all about that, and I think that and just making sure finance plays a positive role in society was, was what he did for the book. But again, I was, I was in New Haven, I had to get to Vikram's classroom to teach the class, 
Uh, and I couldn't get rid of him. He just he just wanted to talk. So we're at <laughs> breakfast for an hour and a half. I said, you know, Nobel laureate. And I said, Professor Schiller, I'm sorry, I have to leave. <laughs> you know, uh, so that's the kind of guy he is. 